Good afternoon, everybody. Sorry we're late today. I think I gave a little warning of that on Monday, that today at 2 o'clock was the Board of Estimate and Apportionment. So we just finished up, oh, I don't know, 20 minutes ago or so. And uh, we, um, so here we are, live with Lida. We're going to talk about a couple of things today. Of course, we're going to talk about COVID. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the March-April elections, just a tad that are coming up, and um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some jobs that are available with the city that, that you might be interested in. So with COVID, I thought maybe, I know it's hard for you to see this, but I'm going to hold this up, and can you guys can see that, right? So what you see is that this is the moving average of new COVID hospital admissions. and. You, you see there was this, this really sharp spike, and now it has leveled off a little bit, but it has leveled off at a very high rate. And this is very consistent which, with what we've been talking about for the last few weeks. Um, numbers from yesterday in the city of St. Louis, we, had, we reported 115 new cases yesterday, 75 the day before, 170 the day before that. So, our average number of cases per day, per seven day rolling average right now in the city of St. Louis is 122. Now, that's better than it was. It was up at 140, but it still is, uh, was even higher than 140. It was 153 at one point, but uh, 122 is still a very high rate. I attribute that bit of a decline really to more of you who are, are being more careful, um, who are wearing your mask, who are social distancing, um, and hopefully not getting together with, with big groups. Keep your groups small. So uh, we, we certainly need for those numbers to continue to come down. Right now they're plateaued at a high level. Uh, number of people that are currently in the hospital in the region, this is two, day, two days before, over 1,000 again. Uh, 1,011 yesterday. Uh, we had been down as low as 950, uh, but pump, uh, picked back up again yesterday to 1,011. Of, a nun of those people, of those 1,011 people, 190 of them are in the ICU, and 116 of them are on ventilators. So still very high numbers. Um, we know that number of deaths has been going up steadily. The city of St. Louis is at 275 deaths uh, cumulatively right now. Looking at that uh, back <clears throat> on the 1st of December, so what, 14, 15 days ago, we were at 240. So that, you know, when, you, when you're running a lot of cases, which we have been for the last month or a little longer, six weeks i mean eventually those you know a portion of those folks get sick enough that they go into the hospital and sadly a portion of those folks don't come out of the hospital and so these high high numbers result um, a, a bit later a few weeks later in increased numbers of of deaths and that is um you know heartbreaking and um i think you know my heart goes out to all those families and I, I know more and more people, and I know many of you do, um, families that have been touched by, by COVID, either through very, very s serious illness or even, even a death. So we know that, um, at least for now, until we get widespread vaccinations, um, the only thing that can protect us is our own behavior. So you all, you all know that. I'm sure you're tired of hearing me say it. but. It just has to con you know, be front of mind. And as here we are on what, the 16th of December. So in eight days, it's gonna be Christmas Eve. Nine days, it's gonna be Christmas Eve. Uh, Christmas Day, then New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. And it's, it's gonna take uh, a lot of personal discipline to uh, change your plans, what you might usually do on those holidays. Maybe you get together with a big group to keep those groups really small and uh, make sure that everyone is in, who is in your group is um, 
being as careful as you are. So you you know they can't have another group uh, over here and then remain safe. So uh, it will be um, Christmas will be different, just like Thanksgiving was, but you know even more celebrations around Christmas. So that's that's the numbers for COVID. The city of St. Louis compared to other counties. Um, we have the city, hmm, that's yesterday's, this is today's, um, we're running at about 41, close to 41 new cases per day per 100,000. And I told you we were averaging 122 uh, new cases per day. We have a right around 300,000 people, so that's how you get that 40 41 people per day. Other, uh, other counties, St. Louis County's uh, running at 64, St. Charles at 68, Jefferson at 68, um, Franklin at 53. The whole state of Missouri is running on average overall about 58. Now all of those numbers have come down a little bit <clears throat> since we began tracking. Um, so let's let's all stick with the program here and you know continue with the mitigation strategies to um which which help so that's covid we'll take your questions about covid um at that point in time a couple of things i told you we just had the board of estimate and apportionment meeting and one of the things that we did at that meeting was we we transferred seventy five thousand dollars probably doesn't sound like a lot of money to you for a city but let me tell you in this economy when we our sales tax or every revenue stream is down significantly even finding seventy five thousand dollars is not easy and so but we found seventy five thousand dollars we're transferring it to the election board so that the election board can continue to have the in-person absentee voting uh, hopefully at the same locations uh, that they had in November, in, yes, in November, uh, which would be three libraries. They, they still have to work on firming that up. Um, and also so that the election board can do some mailings to inform people about the new election um, law that went into effect here in, in November where in March, when you are voting uh, in, in the primary, that will now be nonpartisan, and we're going to try out something called approval voting. And that means if you go to vote for mayor or comptroller or an alderman, they're, they're, half of the aldermen are on the ballot, and there's more than one candidate, you can vote for all of the candidates if you want, or you can vote for just one. And so I think you know that we do need to communicate with the public about that, and the election board is going to do that um, in a very um, objective way, so that people know what the new uh, what the new rules are. Then the results of that March election, the top two candidates in any race will advance to April, and they will have a runoff in April. Even if there's only two candidates on the ballot, let's say there's an alderman race, there's two people in it. Those two people will run against each other in March. Those same two people, even though one of them assuredly got 50%, those same two people will run against each other in April. So it's a bit of a do-over in that case. In other cases where you have multiple candidates, right now there are three candidates for mayor. <clears throat> two of those candidates will advance in April. One of them will not. So the election board, <coughs> excuse me, the election board is, uh, will do some, some mailings and some education around that. That's why we found the $75,000 transferred to the election board so that they could do that. It was unanimously supported at the board of ENA. Comptroller had a similar idea. Um, just, we, we just found a different source of money and so it doesn't matter where it came from, the fact is that that, it, that is there and, and the election board will be able to do that. And then the third thing, and again, this is another um, subject entirely, 
is that uh, I know that there are a lot of people right now that are out of work <clears throat> or whose hours have been cut. The city needs, uh, we call them heavy equipment operators. You need either a CDL one, a CDL A or B, was that what it is? A or? and B. A and B, you want a CDL license. And it's people that can drive big trucks generally. It could be refuse truck, could be a street department truck, could be a tow truck, um, any number of, of vehicles. Uh, the pay is pretty good, the starting pay is around $38,000, I think. You can apply online. We'll put the link online. So if you have a CDL uh, and need a job, city's a good place to work. You'll have benefits. You'll, if you stick with it for five years, you'll be vested in a retirement plan. Um, so we, we are, we really need there. By the way, there is no, this applies to anybody in, in the region. Uh, there is not a residency requirement for CDL, uh, for, for truck drivers, I'll call them, right, heavy equipment operators at this point in time because we are so short. Um, if you think about, um, we have about 50 drivers right now for our trash trucks. This is just one example. On any given day, we get 40 or 42 of them because people go on vacation or they're sick or they are uh, you know, have days off. Um, and so we're, we get about 40 people to show up. We've been w running a lot of overtime when working on Saturdays. We need more drivers. So, good opportunity. Questions? You guys uh, are choking me up, Dave. So we had a couple of COVID questions and vaccine questions today, Mayor. So Greg is watching and um, maybe referring to the chart you showed, but had a question about the graph suggesting, did we not have as bad of a Thanksgiving as was previously projected? Hmm. Well, <clears throat> I think it might be fair to say it, ha it hasn't been as bad as we feared. Still wasn't good, but not as bad as we feared. Uh, Good. Okay. Uh, Brianna's question has to do with school and getting vaccinated. Uh, what mm -hmm. do you think next semester looks like for kids in schools in the city? Will they have access to the vaccine? Will they be back in person? You know, <clears throat> let me talk about the vaccine for a minute. Today's Wednesday. It was Monday when the first dose of the vaccine was given. There aren't very many doses right now. Um, and <clears throat> since Monday, many people have emailed me, you know, Facebook messaged me, tweeted at me saying, where's my shot? Got to be patient, folks. This is going to roll out over months. Um, if you are not, <clears throat> healthcare workers are getting the, the uh, vaccination first. Then um, police, fire, EMS, uh, first responders. Then folks in nursing homes, nursing home staff. So that's a lot of people. <clears throat> we don't have the supply of vaccine today. I mean, it just was approved last Friday night. So be a little bit patient here. Um, I think that <clears throat> it will be March, April, May before somebody who has no underlying conditions or uh, isn't a healthcare worker is able to get the vaccine. But we'll see. Tomorrow, tomorrow's Thursday, and I believe the FDA is going to consider whether or not to approve the Moderna vaccine. That would be great if they did. Behind that is AstraZeneca, maybe Johnson & Johnson, <clears throat> maybe others. So just rolling out right now. So, you know, it's going to take a little patience. I doubt, I, I don't think schools will get the vaccine by the beginning of the second semester, which is, you know, what, the few days after the first of the year. It, it won't be to schools by then. Uh, Max had a question about the taking, about getting the vaccine. Um, wants to know if 
you and Dr. Page and Steve Elman and other regional leaders are willing to uh, get the vaccine together or take it publicly so people know that it's uh, safe to do? Well, I can't speak for uh, County Executive Page or, or Elman, but I certainly uh, will take the vaccine when it's my turn. And I say that <clears throat> because I don't want to. I don't want to get in line or try to get the vaccine now when a healthcare worker or a firefighter or a police officer who's out there interfacing every day. I don't want to take a, a, a dose from from them. But certainly, uh, I will take the vaccine. And uh, if somebody thinks it's helpful for me to do it in public, I'll be glad to do that. I do it every year on, for the flu shot, and you know, big old needle going in the. It's just not a big deal. I'm happy to do it. Uh, Joe has a question about the relief bill that's being debated um, in Washington. Uh, his question is, can you encourage people to write to their senators and representatives, urge them to pass it, and what do you think St. Louis stands to gain, or people in St. Louis stand to gain, if they can pass uh, a second CARES Act? Well, absolutely. I always encourage you to, to write to your uh, congressman or your senators, congresswoman or your senators, and uh, <clears throat> You know, this has been going on for since September, I want to say. And it looks like, and, and I've been in meetings for the last two hours or here, but it looks like there may be something ready to pass today. Has, does anybody know? Has, I don't know. I didn't say anything about okay. Details, Details are coming out. I had a conversation this morning with our federal lobbyist about it, and again yesterday. Uh, so it looks like perhaps there'll be some <clears throat> stimulus package, CARES 2, that will come out today or tomorrow. But I'll be honest with you, we thought that a week ago. We thought that two or three weeks ago. So um, it looks like they're closer than they've ever been. Hopefully they will. Uh, Nathan's question is about the vaccine. Uh, for folks who are Nathan down, Cromwell? Maybe it's just okay. Nathan. All right. Uh, for folks who are down the pipeline, how do you anticipate or what are the ways that people are going to be able to uh, see that it's their turn, know it's their turn, get notified it's the, the, their turn? Right. That's Nathan Cromwell. Hi, Nathan. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, as, as we get more supply, it'll be communicated, obviously, through social media, but also through regular newspaper, through TV broadcasts, through radio broadcasts. Uh, I was on a call yesterday where, you know, everybody was talking about, and don't forget about just paper, you know, flyers and that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, stay tuned. It's still a little while, it's still a little ways away, uh, but there'll be plenty. I don't think you'll miss it uh, because we're all trying as hard as possible to communicate over multiple, multiple uh, media streams to make sure that people know. Uh, a few more <clears throat> questions there. Chuck's question is, what guidelines that we've implemented do you think are helping the most, and what more do you think local and state leaders could do to stop the spread? Well, clearly the mask mandate is the most, mask mandate and social distancing are the two uh, most important and most effective things. Now, that's, and of course, you got to wash your hands. <clears throat> you got to keep your group small. I think those are the most important things that we've, we've updated. And, and that's just not just based on what I think, but, you know, there have been a number of studies about uh, it's not the mandate, the mask mandate that works. It's when people follow it. It's when you actually wear the mask that works. So that is, um, I think that's the most effective. You know, of course, I wish we had had a statewide mask mandate. I wish that, uh, that masks had not been politicized in the way that they have been, but I think n at this point in time, just wear your mask, socially distance. So two more questions. <coughs> Adam's question, somewhat related to COVID, wants to know if, um, with all the talk of the vaccine, do you have an update on conventions and trade shows returning to the city? Do you think March is a realistic time frame? Hmm. I don't know if March, if it, you know, I don't, I don't know what the numbers will be in March. First of all, that's three months away. If you would ask me three months ago what, where we'd be today, I, I mean, we just don't have a crystal ball. I, um, <clears throat> I, I think the answer to that is, is maybe, but not, not necessarily. Got to see what the numbers are. We've. 
Uh, we've put out some metrics that, you know, before you can have big events. You, you probably also saw that uh, Major League Baseball, I think, has delayed their start. Uh, the Muni announced this week that they're delaying their start. They normally start around, oh, the second or third week of June. They're delaying that until the middle of July in the hopes that by then we will have, uh, the numbers will be much lower and the vaccine, more and more people will have been vaccinated. Uh, two other <coughs> questions. Last on COVID, we've had some comments of praise for uh, enforcing businesses that are not complying mm -hmm. with mask and capacity rules. Could you please encourage folks to go to the restaurants and businesses that are following safety guidelines to keep people safe? Well, thank you. Whose question or whose comment was that? Many. Many, okay, many comments. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, in the city of St. Louis, the vast majority of our businesses are doing an excellent job. They are um, spreading out the tables. They are, you know, having two bar seats in the space and then two more. Um, they are making sure that everyone's wearing their mask except when they're seated at their table actively eating or drinking. Uh, they've gone to a lot of trouble, uh, a lot of expense, I should say, uh, in terms of um, dividers, plexiglass dividers, that sort of thing, really to protect their staff and to help protect you. So, um, yes, I am a, a big proponent of patronizing those businesses that are really hurting now who are following good, good procedures and good practices, absolutely. I think our last question from Emily about <coughs> jobs and working for the city. Hmm, good. Question about $15 minimum wage. Mm -hmm. Does it apply just for city employees or does it for all jobs in the city? Uh, Emily, last year, probably about a year, at least a year ago, uh, I did an executive order to say that all city jobs, all jobs working for the city of St. Louis will pay a minimum of $15 an hour. We do not have the authority to require that for all businesses with who are located within the city. Um, that would have been a statewide minimum wage. We actually tried that once about three or four years ago and were struck down in the courts. But every employee for the city of St. Louis has a $15 an hour minimum wage. So that's it for questions today. Thank you all for being with us today. and. Um, We'll be back with you next week. Thanks so much.